So I haven't thought of a way to introduce these videos, so let's just get right into it. This video is actually going to be an introduction video of sorts, but then I came across another conspiracy theory. And well, the introduction can wait because I want to make a video about this first. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in the postpartum unit and I had a brand new mom. And she had questions about her Rogam shot, why she needed it, and why her baby was a certain blood type. So I explained how RH sensitization happened and genes and alleles determine blood type. And then a couple of days later, I was double checking just to make sure I gave her the right information. And I came across this entire conspiracy theory surrounding the RH factor. For the sake of understanding this video, we'll review very, very basic biology. Once you hear somebody talk about their blood type, they're actually talking about what antigen is present on their blood cells. And when you hear somebody say their blood type is positive or negative, what they're actually saying is whether they're positive or negative for the RH antigen. RH is short for rhesus, as in monkey. And they discovered that people who have the RH antigen, who are a positive blood type, also have a protein in their bodies that they have in common with the rhesus monkey. So they conclude from this that somewhere along the line, we must have inherited the RH factor from monkeys. Now, the reason there are conspiracies surrounding the RH factor is that the whole theory that we inherited this gene from monkeys doesn't really answer the fact as to why some people have have the RH factor and some people do not. And probably the easiest set of theories to understand are the migration theories. They have to do with humans migrating to different parts of the world and the RH factor coming about as an adaptation to environment. And if you look to Africa even today, especially the parts that have not mixed with European blood at all, it is almost entirely 100% positive blood type. The RH factor actually affects the gas exchange on the surface of blood cells. So they think that ancient civilizations started in Africa and that when they migrated north to Europe and there was a difference in altitudes, they had to adapt to their environment by some becoming RH negative and some I'm staying RH positive. The other migration theory starts with the RH negative blood type because if you look on a map today, the densest population with the negative blood type is in the Basque region. And the Basque region is an area between France and Spain. And side note, the Basque language, which I had never even heard of, is spoken by more than 700,000 people natively and is considered to be one of the first languages on earth. Ando dago, I have no idea how to pronounce those words. Anyway, blood. This theory says that the negative blood type started in the Basque region and that it was only when those populations migrated north that the positive blood type appeared. Now those, like I said, are the simplistic theories, but what does a good controversy need? Well, aliens. More specifically, Anunnaki. Just a little bit of foundation, the Human Genome Project everybody knows about. They tried to map out the entire human genome, and some scientists were hoping to use the genome in order to forge a logical connection between apes and humans. And while there was a high degree of similarity, they came across about 223 genes that could not be explained. They came up with a theory that says that at some point in our history, we were crossed with a bacteria. Now that explanation did not sit well with Zechariah Sitchin. He says that when you look into Genesis at the creation of man that it is a true story, but just incomplete. His version includes Anunnaki, which are an ancient Sumerian Babylonian deity, and that they came to Earth to mine for gold. The Anunnaki took the creature Homo erectus, put their genes into that creature, and that is how we get Homo sapiens. And other theorists who want to figure out where the Rh negative blood type comes from use this as the foundation in order to say that the Rh negative blood type is actually alien blood. Not only that, but they also use the entire phenomenon of Rh sensitization as further evidence that their theory is true. Rh sensitization occurs if a mother is a negative blood type and the fetus is a positive blood type. Because in an initial pregnancy, if the mother is exposed to the fetus's blood in any way, her body will see that as a foreign substance and will build up antibodies against that blood. So that's why we give them shots of Rogan, but both during the pregnancy and 72 hours postpartum because we want to give them an immunoglobulin to shut down their immune system so that their body doesn't kill the fetus. And the alien believers point out that this does not occur anywhere else in nature. Well, except donkeys. And they also make a jump to the conclusion that if you have Rh negative blood in your body, you also have supernatural abilities. They actually say that Jesus Christ may have even been a negative blood type and that that would explain why he was able to perform all those miracles. Not only that, but they think that the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary was in fact the direct fertilization of Anunnaki, which would explain why Jesus Christ had so much alien blood. Not all theories surrounding the Rh factor have to do with aliens, and I wish I had time to go into those theories, but I have no idea how long this video is going to be, and I don't want to make another seven minute video because you'll be mad at me. I'm just going to cut it short right here and say, have a good day. I will see you next time for the video about the introduction, unless I come up with another conspiracy theory.